Am I the a-hole for telling my grandparents slash relatives that I didn't move out for college? I moved out as I got kicked out when I turned 18? Hey everyone, I'm 18 male. A few weeks ago, it was my birthday. I turned 18. And as soon as I turned 18, at 12 a.m. while I was sleeping in my room, my dad knocked on the door, turned the lights on, pulled my blanket off and told me, get up and get out of my house. You are 18 now. I already knew I was going to be kicked out at 18, as my mom slash dad often mentioned to me in the house. When you're 18, you're out of house. Or they'd say something, I can't wait till your mother and I get some alone slash quiet time when you leave this house at 18. They already had plans to kick me out before anyway, so I already knew it. But I wasn't worried as I have a good slash decent savings amount of 5,000 US dollars I earned from freelancing on the side. And ever since I turned 18, I've been making a decent slash income as well of that. Doing it full time right now. I can afford an apartment in my area and essentials and some nice stuff as well. So that day got kicked out, I packed all of my stuff in a suitcase, left and slept the night at my best friend's house. Woke up and same day I arranged an apartment through a landlord I know personally. Now I have my own apartment and I'm living by myself. Then today I had a group FaceTime call where my grandparents, aunt, uncle, mom, dad, etc. were all in the FaceTime call. My grandpa asks, So your father told me you moved out right to attend college. Which college are you attending? I told my grandpa, No, grandpa. I didn't move out to attend college. I moved out because I was kicked out. My grandpa's face immediately turned from a happy smiling face to an angry shocked face and it basically went off on my mom and dad. The man said cuss words I never heard of before. Lol, he scolded my parents like for two hours live in FaceTime, with all of our relatives on a group FaceTime call. After the group FaceTime ended, my mom slash dad gave me a call personally and they were pissed. They said, Never before has your grandpa insulted us today, and he did because of you way home. Cuss word, cuss word, and some more cuss words till they finally end a call. So am I the a-hole for telling my grandparents that I got kicked out? Now for the top comments. Not stay home. Who does that to their child? Narcissistic, abusive a-holes do that. Fair, not all parents should be parents. Not stay home. Who does this to their own child on their 18th birthday? They lied because they knew how their actions would look to others. If they were embarrassed, then they only have themselves to blame. I'm glad you told your grandparents the truth. And I'm so sorry that your 18th was so rubbish. Hopefully you can celebrate your birthday with your friends soon. That's if you haven't already. As well as leaving your parents behind. Yeah, I think I might celebrate my birthday with my homies later. A small one. And your granddad too. He's got your back more than your so-called parents have shown. Let's see. You told the truth and your parents think the very natural consequences they had to endure is your fault. Sounds like you might be the only mature one in your family of three. Not they all. And an extra blown kiss to your badass grandpa. It also is highly illegal to kick someone out without a 30-day notice. And here, even if they claim they gave him a verbal notice, it doesn't count because Opie was a minor 30 days ago. Can't legally get into an agreement like that. File police report. Illegal eviction plus harassment. Then sue the heck out of them. Next story. Am I the a-hall for quietly packing my stuff and leaving my family's house without telling anyone after my dad threatened to kick me out? I, 23, female, live at home. I am in grad school and work part-time plus intern at an office. I graduate in June and I've been applying to jobs as much as I can so I can finally move out. My sister, 20, female, also lives at home but is doing school online and doesn't work. I try to help with chores around the house as much as possible. Although it's difficult, since I leave the house early in the morning and come home late at night. Last week, I came home and there were clean dishes in the dishwasher. I said I'm gonna take a quick shower then empty the dishwasher. And my dad went on a rant about how I'm useless and never help around the house. And that my sister is always the one doing everything. I explained that I do help. But that just because they haven't seen me help doesn't mean that I don't. He asked me to give him an example, and I told him that I took the garbage out the night before. The conversation escalated to him saying that I should shut up and not argue any longer because he can easily make me homeless if he wanted to. I said okay and went upstairs. 
the next morning while everyone was asleep. I packed my things and left, and I've been sleeping in my car for a week and taking showers at my gym. Later in the day after I left, my parents called and my mom texted me asking where I am when I didn't come home when I was supposed to. I didn't reply and blocked my entire family's numbers and social medias and haven't spoken to them since. They have been calling and texting my friends asking them where I am. I haven't told any of my friends that I'm sleeping in my car, so I got very confused text from my friends asking me what's going on and why my parents are asking where I am and if I'm safe and okay. I told my closest friend that I left home and that I'm safe and let her know to tell my parents that I'm fine but I have no desire to speak to them anymore. Now they've been begging my friend to disclose my location and asking her to ask me to allow them to speak to me. I went to my friends yesterday and she told me that what I did was awful and that I should speak to them. I told her that they threatened to make me homeless so I left by my own volition. But she's insisting that making them worry about my safety is a horrible thing to do. But I honestly think I just gave them what they asked for. They wanted to get rid of me, so I left. Am I the a-hole for leaving and refusing to communicate with them? Edit. My mom was there when this happened and she was on my dad's side as well. So she's aware of the incident and knows that I was threatened to be made homeless. They also said that I was most likely never going to get a job and was going to stay at home forever even though I have two jobs right now. Internship is unpaid though, and I'm actively looking for a full-time job. And yes, they've done this before. Not today, Hall, but maybe talk to your local police department and let them know that if your parents try to file a missing persons report, it's a waste of time because you're not missing. They threatened to kick you out for not helping, so you left. Sounds like a win-win to me. Can you talk to any of your friends about staying with them while you get things together? This is important. People leaving harmful relationships can often have the perpetrators file missing person reports. Another method of exerting control. Also, obviously, OP is not a home. Info, I assume the dishwasher incident is the straw that broke the camel's back? Otherwise, secretly moving out and cutting communication does seem a tad extreme if it was the only trigger. In any case, you're an adult and I hope it doesn't take long for you to find your own place. Eh, uh, they threatened to make her homeless, so she left. How is that an overreaction? Like, they clearly aren't interested in having her there except to do stuff for them when they demand it. The parents sound like those people who give missing reasons responses when asked why their children doesn't talk to them. Dad threatened to throw her out while mom was there, and now they both act like they don't know why she left? When I was in high school, my mom was talking to my aunt about sending me to another state to live with aunt. I was a good kid. Worked part-time, 3.5 GPA, theater kid. My crime? Mom found out I was hooking up. I was a junior, so 16 or 17. I moved out less than a week later. I was renting a room with an older guy a friend was dating. It wasn't the greatest plan, but I was about to be uprooted from the town I lived in my whole life, right before my senior year of high school. So yeah, sometimes it doesn't take a lot of incidents. It just takes one big one. She's 23. She is allowed to leave home and go no contact. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter she has to pay $200 a month extra rent or I'll kick her out after she made me lose my bonus? I, 53 female, have a daughter, Macy, 23 female, who lives with me. For my work, I'm a manager at a fast food chain that I have worked at for 31 years. Due to my long time with the company, I was awarded an extra $200 bonus if my shop took enough money and I know the owner well. However, I was asked by him not to tell anyone about the bonus or he would have to take it away, as everyone else would demand the same. I agreed to this and said I wouldn't tell anyone, and I didn't. I'm on good terms with him and we follow each other in social media, so I refrained from telling Macy, as she can't keep secrets well. But last month, around a year after I got a bonus, my daughter found out that I had managed to pay off a credit card and wanted to know how, as I didn't think I'd pay it off for another year. I told her the interest had gone down, but she didn't believe me and kept pestering me about it for days. I finally told her I would tell her if she wouldn't tell anyone else, so I told her I got a raise at work. Despite having the bonus for a year, my daughter wanted to get dinner to celebrate, so we went to her favorite restaurant, which is quite pricey. 
She took a picture of our meals and tagged me on Facebook with the caption, Mom got a pay rise, which in her words, she thought nobody would notice, as nobody uses Facebook anymore. Sadly, I didn't notice until the morning after, but the damage was already done. The owner called me into his office and was very sincere when he told me he couldn't give me the bonus anymore, as a colleague had complained having seen the post. I also apologized, saying I kept it a secret as long as I could as I know my daughter can't keep secrets well. When I got home, I demanded her to remove the post and told her she lost me $200 a month. She felt bad but told me it wasn't her fault, as I didn't tell her the full extent of the pay rise and how it was so much money. I told her that unless she starts paying me $200 a month extra, that she will have to find somewhere else to live to make up for it. My oldest Mia, 26 female, thinks I'm being harsh on her, that it was my fault for telling her as I know what she's like. However, my daughter pays $200 a month rent and spends the rest of her money on luxury items like expensive bags, perfume, and makeup. I'm not demanding she pay an unreasonable amount. If anything, $400 a month is incredibly cheap compared to other house prices. Am I the a-hole for demanding my daughter pay $200 a month extra rent or I'll kick her out? Now for the comments. Uh, your boss is the a-hole for making the bonus so secret and conditional and for removing it like that. I don't know if that's normal in the kind of industry you're in slash country, but in mine that would be illegal actually. I don't know why you're focusing more on your child than on the unfair labor practice. Yes, she was wrong for posting it if you told her not to do so. And sure, charge her for what she cost you, but she's not the villain in my eyes. Nor are you. Not stay home. Also, it is literally illegal in the US federally illegal to forbid employees from discussing their wages with their co-workers and slash or to penalize them for doing so. You can literally take it to the Department of Labor and they will probably either get your pay reinstated or get you a settlement. Do you live in the United States? If so, it is illegal to forbid employees from discussing their compensation and this may have been unlawful retaliation. I don't actually know this. We have a family friend whose husband is a lawyer, so I will consult him about it. Definitely talk to someone familiar with local labor laws to explore your options. In my opinion, the biggest a-hole in this story is your employer. Regardless of whether it's legal or not, it's a super crappy and unfair labor practice. Everyone sucks here, but mostly your boss. Seriously, contact a local labor attorney because this sounds extremely suspicious. And it's illegal to stop employees from discussing wages in most places. Super illegal to retaliate for that. If your boss is doing that, who knows what other labor laws they're breaking. A local labor attorney can better advise you in what all you may be owed. I'd be surprised if you're being properly compensated for overtime and other such things, if this is how they're doing business. You can be mad at your daughter or co-workers, but it's misplaced. The blame goes to the boss. Anything else is an intentional distraction. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my son's teacher to F off when she tried to force me to invite 24 kids to his birthday party? I got a call from my son's six teacher today. Let's say her name is Ms. Goldbaum. She says, Hi, are you Al's fake name father? I say yes and ask if everything is okay. She tells me that she understands he is having a birthday party and that he invited a few of his friends from class, but not everyone. I said yes, there are a few kids in there that he has problems with. And also, I don't think we can really handle hosting 24 kids and their parents. She then tells me that there is a rule that if any kids in the class are invited, that all kids in the class are invited. I told her it is an event off school hours on a private property in my home. She can no more tell me what I do there and who I can and can't invite, any more than I can decide who is invited to her Thanksgiving dinner. She then tells me there is a good reason for the rule, since kids get their feelings hurt if they get left out. So then I pointed out to her that there are 24 kids in the class. If their parents attend a party with them, then that can be upwards of 72 people. And I told her that's just not a reasonable thing to ask. I also point out that he has friends from other classes attending. So do I have to invite that whole other class too? She then said, Al is in my class. He is under my supervision. This is my rule. 
and then told her that Al is only under her supervision while he was in class. I'm the one throwing the party, and she doesn't get to make rules for my house or me. She then said if it involves her class, she does. After a bit of back and forth on this, I lost my cool. I said, Lady, it's pretty clear that you're too used to bossing around kids who have to listen to you, and that you don't seem to understand that your little fiefdom ends at the end of the school day and doesn't go further than schoolhouse gates. I am not a six-year-old in your class. I'm a 38-year-old union electrician planning a private event in my own home, off school hours. If you think you're the one to make the rules for me, in my home in which I paid a mortgage on, you can go F yourself. And there isn't a goddamn thing you can do about it. She then kind of stammered and I ended a call. My wife agrees that the school has no business telling us who we can and can't invite into our home and that they don't make the rules for our house. However, she says I went too far in telling Miss Goldbaum to go F herself. I'm very comfortable with telling her that she has no right to tell us who we can and can't invite into our home, and that it is crazy I might have to invite up to 72 people for my son to have any friends from his class attend. But in truth, I do kind of wish I left that last go F yourself part off. But my friends at work and a few other parents tell me someone needed to take her down a peg since she was getting too big for her britches and deserves a lesson about overstepping. So am I the a-hole? Added, to address a few common questions or things people brought up, first we invited roughly 9 out of 24 kids in his class. One or two maybe from other classes. I'm a little embarrassed to say I'm not totally sure because I feel like I should be, but that's what it is. Secondly, most of the invites were done by my wife directly texting the other kids' families. There were a few kids where my son wanted to invite them, but I don't have their family's contact info. So we gave him a few sealed envelopes with notes inside saying we understand the boys are friends and that we're having an event for his birthday and even aside from that, we'd like to set up playdates. From there, the family contacts us and then myself and my wife do the invites after we chat with the family for a bit. My son himself doesn't do the invites. He is a six-year-old boy. We do the invites through the other parents. Not day hall and I think you need to escalate this. The only way you'd have been out of line would be if you let him hand out invitations during class time. Ask for a meeting between the school administrator and his teacher. At the beginning of the meeting, apologize for losing your temper and your language, but then go on to politely explain what happened during the phone call and ask the administrator if this is school policy. I'm guessing it's not and this teacher is way out of line with his request. Administration probably needs to know what she's up to, so she doesn't keep doing it to other parents. Chances are, she's got a history of crap like this based on her self-righteous attitude. My wife is looking over my shoulder at all of this and particularly likes this idea. And she is the smart one, so you might be onto something. 